Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I want to solve a fun problem all to do with triangular numbers. We want to prove that every positive integer n can be expressed as the sum of at most 79 triangular numbers. Okay, so a triangular number, if you've not seen it before, is simply a number of this form here. So tk is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. So tk is just the kth triangular number and it's simply k times k plus 1 all over 2. And we want to show that if you give me any positive integer n, we can write that number as the sum of at most 79 triangular numbers. Okay, if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to get stuck straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is simply state Lagrange's theorem. I'm not going to prove it in this video, it's a very famous result, so if you've not seen it before, just go ahead and look up the proof. Anyway, this is the theorem. It says that every positive integer n can be expressed as the sum of four square numbers. So here we're including, including zero as a square number, and the theorem says that every positive integer n can be written as the sum of uh, four squares. And in fact, zero is just zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared, so we can just include zero in this guy here as well. And now, as I said, I'm not going to prove this uh, theorem. Go ahead and look at the proof. The proof is actually quite nice. The way you prove this is you go, well, this, you know, if you think of the set of numbers, set of positive integers, which can be written as a sum of four squares, you first prove that that is closed uh, under multiplication. So if you have a, which can be written as a sum of four squares, and b, that can be written as a sum of four squares, then a times b can also be written as a sum of four squares, which means it suffices just to look at prime numbers. And then you prove that every prime number can be written as a sum of four squares. But as I say, I'm not going to prove it in this video, um, but yeah, hopefully if you're interested, you can go ahead and look up the proof. Anyway, the next thing we want to do is consider numbers of the form 8n plus 8. And here n is a non-negative integer. 8n plus 8. Well, because n is a non-negative integer, it's in this set here. So that means we can write it in the form n1 squared plus n2 squared plus n3 squared plus n4 squared. So that means that 8n plus 8 is simply going to be 8 times n1 squared plus n2 squared plus n3 squared plus n4 squared plus 8, like so. But now let's have a look at, oh, sorry, this h should be outside the brackets. Now, let's try and write this in a, another way. And in fact, if we just have a play about with this, what we notice is this is simply the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of 2ni plus 1 squared plus 2ni minus 1 squared. Okay, let's just quickly verify that going from this line to this line. Well, each of the ni's, we're going to get a 4ni squared here plus 4ni plus 1. And here we're going to get a 4ni squared minus 4ni plus 1. So the minus 4ni and plus 4ni will cancel. So we'll just be left with 8ni squared plus 2. So 8ni squared is going to give us these guys here. And then we've got plus 2 for each of the i's. So that's going to be 2 times 4, which is going to give us that 8 there. So that tells us that 8n plus 8 can be written in this form here. And I guess one thing we can observe here is we've already proved a pretty cool result. And that is that every single multiple of 8 can be written as the sum of eight odd square numbers, okay, just by using this argument here. And it's very easy to prove the converse, prove that every multiple, so if you sum eight odd squares, you'll always get a multiple of eight. So a weird way, in a weird way, you can define a multiple of eight or a positive multiple of eight as something that can be written as a sum of eight odd squares. Okay, the way you prove the converse is just by looking at an odd square mod eight, and you notice that an odd square is always gonna be one mod eight. So if you add eight of them, you're going to get 8 mod 8, which is just 0 mod 8, and hence will be a multiple of 8. Anyway, that's a, a little sidetrack. We we've shown that 8n plus 8 can be written as the sum of 4 odd squares, 2ni plus 1 all squared, plus 2ni minus 1 all squared. What we're going to do is use this result uh, to then go and prove that we can write every single positive integer as the sum of at most 79 triangular numbers. But let me clean up the whiteboard first. Okay, so, so far all we've done is worked with multiples of 8 and sums of odd squares. We haven't yet used triangular numbers yet, so we're going to try and want to use this right hand side and see if we can incorporate some triangular numbers into it. What we're going to do is just start with an arbitrary triangular number, tk, and remember, remember that by definition is just k times k plus 1 all over 2. And now we don't really like this 2 on the bottom here, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2, but in fact I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So I get a 4 here and then an 8 here. So 8 times tk is just 4 
k times k plus 1. But if I just go ahead and expand this, this is just 4k squared plus 4k. And now, well, this looks kind of similar, you know, to 2k plus 1 all squared. So if I perhaps add on a 1 and then subtract off a 1 like so, this thing here is simply 2k plus 1 all squared minus 1. Okay, so 8 times the kth triangular number is simply 2k plus 1 all squared minus 1. So that gives me that 2k plus 1 squared is equal to 8tk plus 1, like so. So any odd number squared can be written as 8 times the triangular number plus 1. But remember, 1 is just a triangular number. 1 is just the first triangular number, in fact, t1. So that means that every odd number squared can be written as the sum of, at most, 9 triangular numbers. So 2k plus 1 or squared is certainly 8tk plus 1, and thus this guy here can be written as the sum of, at most, 9 uh, triangular numbers, t numbers. Okay? So that means any odd number squared can be written as the sum of, at most, 9 triangular numbers. Tri 9 triangular numbers. So that means this guy here can be written as the sum of at most 9 tri triangular numbers. Oh, this squared here should be here. Let's see. Okay, this guy here can be written as the sum of at most 9 triangular numbers. So that means this guy and this guy put together can be written as the sum of at most 18 triangular numbers. But then we multiply that there by 4. Okay, so uh, this guy here is the sum of at most um, 72 triangular numbers. So that tells us that 8n plus 8 can be written as the sum of, at most, 72 triangular numbers. So that means that every multiple of 8 can be written as the sum of, at most, 72 triangular numbers. Okay, so let's just perhaps write that out. So 8 times some number m, no matter what m is, we've shown that this guy can be written as the sum of, at most, 72 triangular numbers. Okay, and now what we want to do is show that every number can be written as the sum of at most 79. So that's 7 more than this guy here. So perhaps you can guess what I'm going to do is, well, notice that 8m, any number is either 8m, it's 8m plus 1, 8m plus 2, or so on, all the way down to 8m plus 7. So every number is either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 mod 8. So what I'm going to do is take my number, go back down to the nearest multiple of 8. So if it's 8m plus 4, say... Write 8m as a sum of 72 triangular numbers, and then simply add on 1 4 times, because remember 1 is a triangular number, so that means that 8m plus 4 would therefore be the sum of, or would be the sum of at most 72 plus 4, which is 76 triangular numbers, t numbers are right. Okay, and of course the worst case you can do is if you have 7 here, so then you'd have to do 8m plus 7 lots of 1. And that will give you 79. Uh, and yeah, that, that basically solves our problem. It's hopefully clear to see that you can actually improve this 79 um, a little bit because 3 is also a triangular number. So in this last step here, if you wanted to write 8m plus 7, you can just do that as 3 plus 3 plus 1, as opposed to 1 plus 1 plus 1 uh, 7 times. Okay, so in fact, you can improve this 70, uh, the 79 sorry, a little bit. Um, but in fact, you can improve it a whole lot as well. Gauss managed to prove that uh, you can kind of uh, for sufficiently large n, so for sufficiently large positive integers, you can actually write um, each of those positive integers as a sum of at most three triangular numbers. So he's, he's shown that there exists some positive integer n. So there exists n, and this was by Gauss. There exists some positive integer n such that for all n bigger than or equal to n, uh, n can be written n equals a sum, say from i equals 1 to 70, uh, sorry not 70, but 2, i equals 1 to 3 of t sub say mi. So just three triangular numbers, or at most three triangular numbers to write n. Okay, which is a really cool result and obviously is a lot better than 79. But in this video we're using relatively elementary techniques, I guess the hardest part was knowing Lagrange's theorem perhaps, um, and the rest was just a bit of algebra. We can show that you can write every positive integer as a sum of at most 79 triangular numbers. Anyway, I am waffling now. I hope that has all made sense and I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.